So there's a video trend on YouTube called how YouTube changed my life with less than 500 subscribers. I'm going to talk about my journey, my experience and answer the question, can it actually really change your life? Or is that just a trending topic that a lot of creators are hopping on and talking about because it's popular? I'll give you my real thoughts, my real experiences, and even some advice on how you don't even need to get to 500 subscribers to actually change your life with the skills that you're learning on YouTube. So at time of recording, I'm at about 2,300 subscribers and I've been on YouTube for about a year and a half. And when I started YouTube, I was completely aimless, probably like you are if you're watching this video and you're thinking about starting a channel. I didn't know what my niche was going to be. I didn't know what my publishing schedule was going to be. I didn't know what my channel was going to be about. And like many new YouTubers, I thought that I could just go outside with a camera, let it roll, not really have a plan and just magically I'd come back with like this amazing video that would get me so many subscribes and so many views and so many likes and everybody was going to like me. So with no plan, no map of where I was going, I decided to at least just start posting consistently and seeing if that would maybe attract people to this channel. And like you, I've got a full-time job, I've got a relationship, I've got pets, I've got side hustles, all, all these things, right, that you would think would get in the way, but I dedicated myself and made sure that I was going to release a video every single week. And that's when this change started to happen, when I started to kind of challenge myself to go out with my camera, come back with something cool, whether it was hiking a mountain or hiking to a frozen waterfall or doing street photography in a different area of town that's about 45 minutes away. Unknowingly, even at zero subscribers, I started to build this work ethic and I started to prioritize YouTube. So every single week I made a commitment of the day that I would go shoot something, the day that I would edit it, and then the day that it would be posted by. And even in that cloud of like self-doubt, negative thoughts, hey, should I be doing this? Is this a waste of time? I was actually building skills that would help me later on in my YouTube career. I was starting to build up these good habits of prioritizing my time, my content creation, my content journey, whatever you wanna call it, I was making time for it. And every time that I would go out with my camera and my tripod and I'm in a different city, I'm shooting in different conditions, I'm talking to the camera, I'm getting creative with my shots, I'm getting better at speaking to the camera, that's when some incredible stuff started to happen. Three months later, 10 videos later, 100 subscribers later, I had this newfound confidence in myself to go out and execute on videos, create good content, and I was also learning something new that I would implement in a different video for the next time. So there I was at 100 subscribers, building out really, really good habits that weren't only positive for YouTube, but positive for my own videography business, my own content marketing business. I'm collecting and learning all of this valuable information that is only going to, at the end of the day, make me more marketable and fine tune these incredible skills that don't come easy to creators. What's really cool about YouTube is it actually challenges you day by day, video to video. And yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I was pretty delusional about what I wanted out of YouTube within that first year, I wanted to get 10,000 subscribers. I wanted that little fame that came with being like a successful YouTuber, but that was a stretch goal. Meaning that if that happened, awesome. I would be so happy. I would be ecstatic. But in reality, my approach to YouTube was, Hey, let's just experiment. Let's try it out. Let's give it a shot and let's see what happens. And in the beginning, I think that's the best way to approach it. Be realistic with your goals that only you can control based on your actions and your commitments to your YouTube. For me, it was shooting one video per week and posting it one time per week just to develop that muscle and that habit. And to also build up that mental strength of being able to tell friends no or significant others no that I need to go and shoot a YouTube video because this is my dream. This is what I want. This is what drives me. This is what I want to achieve long term. This is what I want to sustain me a few years from now. So I'm eight months into this thing and I remember being happy because I crossed that 500 subscriber marker and was sitting at about 800 and was just shy of a thousand. And in reality, even though we're kind of covering the 500 subscribers topic, we know that a thousand is the number to really strive for if you want to hit that real monetization. So I'm cranking out new videos still weekly, but I realized that my old content is just blowing up. There's a lot of comments, there's a lot of engagement, there's a lot of watch time hours coming from those videos. And so basically this old catalog is paying residuals and just kind of, you know, padding those stats and getting me closer to that 1000 subscriber marker. And I'll touch on that briefly because I am pretty impatient. When I post a new video out, I want it to perform, right? I think we all want our videos to perform hot out the gates. We want to see the likes, the comments, the views, especially. But what I've learned with YouTube, especially in the beginning, 
let the videos breathe, give them some time. Here's a video that I made a year ago that sat at around 180 views for a very, very long time. And then it got picked up and now it's sitting closer to about 20,000 views. So in addition to becoming a better content creator, a better speaker towards the camera, a better planner, now I'm getting lessons in patience. These are all things that are changing my life, right? And we haven't even hit a thousand subscribers at this point. And another example of how my life has changed with only 500 subscribers on YouTube is the fact that I'm carrying these skills over to my content marketing and content creation business. Over time, when you realize what kind of videos YouTube wants, what kind of structured videos your audience wants, you take those things that you've learned and you can apply that to your content when you're working with clients or business owners, whatever it might be. We all have this dream of making money on YouTube once we get monetized. And right now I'll be completely transparent with you. I've only made $67 from YouTube, even sitting at 2,300 subscribers, a year and a half into this journey. But with all of the skills that I've gained, that I've sharpened from shooting consistently, from editing consistently, from coming up with videos consistently, from scripting videos consistently, I've been able to go out and help business owners and put $47,000 additional on top of my salary by creating content with clients. Look, I've seen a lot of amazing stories and videos from content creators on YouTube talking about how their life has changed after 500 subscribers. And yeah, you can get monetized and you'll start making a little bit of money, but you gotta start thinking out of the box. The skills that you learn as a content creator working on your own channel, from ideation of a video, to scripting a video, to shooting a video, being on camera, editing, posting, all of those things are marketable traits. And you can use those skills to really actually change your freaking life. And if I didn't just give you this bright aha moment on how to actually monetize your content in more ways than one than just YouTube, and maybe I gave you the ick and you're like, dude, I'm just doing this for fun. I just want to document. Then that is totally fine because I get it. I do this as a passion, as a hobby. Something is calling me to do this YouTube thing, but it wouldn't be right to not share how it's actually changed my life and maybe this can inspire you or at least give you an idea of how it can change your life for the better too. And finally, YouTube has changed my life with 500 subscribers because I am truly enjoying life again. YouTube forces you to go outside, to go places, to try new things, to film new things, get new experiences, talk to new people, find new information. The learning, the education, it's all endless. And you're always pushing yourself to be better. There are two sides to YouTube. On the creator side, you get to go build those experiences. You're outside, you're shooting the videos, you're being creative, you're the one taking people on a ride. And on the other side is the consumer, which is totally fine. But guys, for the last 10 or 12 years, I was the consumer. I was laying in bed just watching videos, laying in bed watching people get subscribers, get viewers. I was laying in bed not going out in adventures. I was in bed not learning any new skill sets. If you're thinking or even hesitating about starting YouTube, ask yourself these questions. Do you want to grow? Do you want newfound confidence? Do you want to be knowledgeable? Do you want to be creative? Do you want to be the example? Do you want to be someone who others look to as a role model? You are special. You have something to offer and you're going to learn that it doesn't even take 500 subscribers or whatever number these content creators are putting in their titles to discover some incredible things about yourself. Watch this video or that video and subscribe.